Good morning everyone. I am Dr. Sandeep Chanardhan Tandil. I am a general and laparoscopic surgeon. Today's topic I have taken is a, is a continuation of the salivary gland swellings. Today's swelling I have selected is a parotid gland. That is the acute parotitis. That is inflammation of the parotid gland. Parotid gland is another major salivary gland other than the submandibular gland, sublingual gland and there are multiple minor, minor salivary glands. So in short this area this area is called as a, that is in front of your ear and little below it, it is called as a parotid gland, uh, parotid region because the parotid gland is in that area. The parotid gland has a duct which opens inside our mouth that is uh, above the second molar, upper second molar where the uh, this duct is called as a stenson's duct. So what is acute parotitis? It is an inflammation and swelling of the parotid gland. It can be unilateral that is one side or it can be bilateral that is both side glands can get swollen up. So what are the uh, what are the different reasons or the causes for the parot parotid gland to get inflamed or swollen? It is acute bacterial parotitis that is due to bacterial infection, acute viral parotitis which is also called as a mumps, then HIV related parotitis, then due to tuberculosis it can be chronic parotitis, chronic recurrent parotitis can be autoimmune uh, parotitis that the different uh, reasons for the parotitis today i'll be talking about bacterial parotitis acute bacterial parotitis happens equally in both males and females if you ask me age the children get more viral parotitis that is mum compared to the bacterial parotitis but bacterial parotitis also can happen in a pediatric age group bacterial parotitis is common in the elderly people now what are the causes for the acute bacterial parotitis? Acute bacterial parotitis happens due to the dehydration that is you are drinking inadequate quantity of the water, salivary secretion becomes less and it can cause the infection of the gland. Because of the chronic illness, the elderly person or the who is chronically ill, in that patients they are already dehydrated plus because of the poor oral hygiene, uh, the bacteria can ascend through the duct from the mouth and then it can cause the inflammation of the duct of the parotid gland. Also there are certain medicines which can cause the decreased flow of the saliva. Those medicines also can lead to formation of the parotitis. Acute bacterial parotitis most common organism is a staph aureus. Chronic bacterial parotitis means the infection is happening again and again. That is the, uh, the parotid gland is swollen, getting repeatedly swollen. After like it gets, uh, the swelling goes off in some days and then it recurs back maybe after a few weeks or a few months. So if it is happening again and again it is called as a chronic uh, parotitis and the common causes for that is the formation of the salivary stones in the parotid gland though the formation of stone is less common in parotid gland compared to the submandibular gland because the saliva is more watery in the from the parotid gland while saliva from the submandibular gland is more mucoid type like more sticky type so uh, even another cause for the chronic parotitis is the injury to the parotid duct. If you get acute bacterial parotitis, what are the symptoms? There will be a swelling. A swelling you can see on this area on the parotid region either this side or this side. And the, the, the skin over that area will be reddish in color. Uh, you will be having pain when you are trying to eat or chew the food. Sometimes pus coming inside your mouth uh, just opposite to the second molar teeth. From where the stenson duct, the duct of the parotid gland opens, if you gently massage in that area, you can see a pus coming out of that area. Patient can have fever uh, due to par parotitis. On examination, like when the doctor will examine you, if the doctor is touching you in this area, he will uh, palpate and see how, is, uh, how much is the size of the gland, how much tenderness, how much pain you are having. He will check, try to check the opening of the duct from inside if any pus is coming out and he will try to gently massage and see uh, whether the saliva is coming or it is blocked due to the stone or any other reason. Now what are the investigations? Investigations, most common investigations done is sonography, ultrasonography will find out if there is any collection inside, if how much is the size of the gland, in case any stone is there, it can be detected by it. Second investigation which can be done is a CT scan or MRI. A CT scan and MRI can help in a, even identifying if there is any underlying malignancy or any neoplasms. Uh, another investigation which can be done is a xylography. Xylography is through the duct of the parotid gland, the dye is injected and the entire gland x-ray will be taken. So we can 
can identify the, the ducts if any stone is there, if any duct is damaged. Stenoscopy is another investigation where a small camera and a tube is inserted through the duct inside and the duct can be inspected. Uh, even it helps in relieving the uh, obstruction or the block in the tubes. Another is the pus culture and sensitivity. Doctor might take the pus from inside the mouth from the pus coming from the tube or the duct of the parotid gland and will send for, to, uh, for investigation to know what bacteria is involved in it. So these are the investigations done. Now we will go for the treatment part. So what is the treatment if you get acute, acute bacterial parotitis? Uh, the first treatment doctor will advise is you have to apply, give a gentle massage in this area. Massage should be from backwards and then you have to come forward. It will help in cleaning the, or draining the saliva from inside. Then you have to give some hot compresses in that area. Dehydrate yourself, uh, brush the teeth twice daily or use uh, oral gargles like hexidine mouthwash to maintain the good oral hygiene. And uh, antibiotics depending upon what bacteria most commonly the antibiotic uh, will be given for the gram positive that is staph aureus uh, or else uh, depending upon the pus culture sensitivity antibiotic will be changed if with this treatment medical treatment doesn't help you and you are having a recurrent bacterial infection that swelling is persistent over there not relieving then surgical treatment comes into action thylidinoscopy if there is a stone uh, stone is in impact inside if there is facilities available doctor might advise you go for thylidinoscopy where the with camera will be inserted into the duct and if there is a block or stone it will be taken out. In case of uh, salutinoscopy or is no, option is not available or it is not successful, the treatment option is a surgical where the gland, gland has to be removed that is superficial parotidectomy is done. Now the importance of the parotid gland is a facial nerve. There is an important nerve which goes through the gland. The gland is made up of the uh, superficial lobe and deep lobe that means it has, means the you can say as a compartment uh, upper one part is above the nerve one part is below the nerve and nerve is going in between that this nerve is very important for your facial expression that means you are smiling uh, raise, raising the eyebrows closing the eyes blowing the mouth all these things are controlled by the facial nerve there are two facial nerves on the either side so the surgery is important on that part and every surgeon will try to take care that to preserve your facial nerve uh, post surgery, doctor will be putting the absorbable or non absorbable stitches in this area. Patient might have to stay for one or two days in the hospital and then will be discharged. Stitches will be removed after the seventh day or the tenth day, depending upon the operating doctor. And the scar, if you ask, it will be below, behind, like very close to the ear and going back. It won't come on the this part, on the face part, it will be going lower down. Thank you for watching my video. If you have any doubts, you can uh, ask me uh, in the comment box. Thank you very much.